into the big picture what God is trying to say to you. That's the reason I told you, like, focus on the word of God. So when you focus on the word of God and when we pray, God will lead us in the right way and he will not lead us to fall into temptation. Most of our precious God, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time you have given us. Thank you for this fellowship, Lord. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to ingest your word and talk, Lord. It is your faithfulness you have in us, Lord, Mm -hmm. that you have given this opportunity. Thank you for speaking into our hearts, Lord. We especially pray that you prepare our hearts to open for your words, Lord. Help us to implant those words in our hearts and let it be fruitful, Lord, and let it, let it be yielding more fruits as you have written in the words, Lord. Nothing of the worldly pleasures choke us these words out of our hearts, cement us deep into our hearts so that we will walk in the way that you want us to be, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Last week, um, we saw in James about the temptations to sin. Though I will not be dealing more with James today, but I want to indulge a little bit deeper into the temptations to sin. Uh, How we need to prepare ourselves so that we will not yielding ourselves to the temptations. How wise we need to be to overcome temptations. Last time we saw that in the book of uh, James, how we need to handle them. And we saw that temptations are faced by every other person. There is no other person in this world left alone for this temptation. I mentioned about the monk who is in a monastery. He is also dealing with the same temptation as an earthly person who is outside. So it's a situation that is given to us that how we need to overcome this. There are lots of temptations that we face. Um, We see people, we see ourselves um, yielding into temptations, lying, gossiping, stealing, envying, being jealous, striving for popularity. We say those temptations that are happening in our personal life, in our family life, in our workplace, in churches also. So we need to know that how we need to overcome these temptations. As I told you earlier in the last message, it's a part of life. But what we require is the wisdom to overcome the temptation. If you look into the 13th verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And watch carefully. And God is faithful. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So we need to understand 
certain things how to deal with the temptations as i told you earlier it's an enticement and we also saw the source of it most of us like we would always say like the source of temptation is always satan but i think like last message we saw the temptations are from our inner desires there is always an bait outside but when we look into the bait and when we take the bait we fall into the temptations that's what we saw last time there are three powerful forces working together in this place you know that one is this one is satan another one is the world system and the another one is our flesh so being tempted isn't a sin but yielding to it will lead to sin we always when we think about temptation or when we have a conversation about temptation we always hear this phrase falling into temptation falling into temptation but you know in reality we don't fall into temptation but we walk into temptation it's the mind process there is not an immediate incidence that happens but it's a slow thought process that will slowly lead us into this temptation it could be also a sudden fall but it happens as a thought process it's by entertaining a particular idea we take and then it gradually takes a downward step into our imagination and again when we look into all these temptations we might think in the thought process okay come on like if i'm going to do this or if i'm going to think this or if i'm going to take this this is not going to lead me into temptation or lead me into sin but that is the wrong step we are doing satan always knows how to lead us into the wrong path and deceive us if you look into genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 6 if any have you uh, any of you have uh, got a tamil bible if you could read from genesis 3 verses 1 to 6 தேவனாயே கர்த்தர் உண்டாக்கின சகல காட்டு ஜீவங்களை சர்ப்பமானது தந்திரமுள்ளதாய் இருந்தது அந்த ஸ்திரீயை நோக்கி நீங்கள் தோட்டத்தில் உள்ள சகல விருட்சங்களின் கனியையும் வசிக்க வேண்டாம் சாரி நீங்கள் தோட்டத்தில் உள்ள சகல விருட்சங்களின் கனியையும் புசிக்க வேண்டாம் என்று தேவன் சொன்னது உண்டோ என்றது ஸ்திரீ சர்ப்பத்தை பார்த்து நாங்கள் தோட்டத்தில் உள்ள விருட்சங்களின் கனிகளை புசிக்கலாம் ஆனாலும் தோட்டத்தின் நடுவில் இருக்கிற விருட்சத்தின் கனியை குறித்து தேவன் நீங்கள் சாகாதபடிக்கு அதை புசிக்கவும் அதை தொடவும் வேண்டாம் என்று சொன்னார் என்றாள் அப்பொழுது சர்ப்பம் ஸ்திரீயை நோக்கி நீங்கள் சாகவே சாவதில்லை நீங்கள் இதை புசிக்கும் நாளிலே உங்கள் கண்கள் திறக்கப்படும் என்றும் நீங்கள் நன்மை தீமை அறிந்து தேவர்களைப் போல இருப்பீர்கள் என்றும் தேவன் அறிவார் என்றது அப்பொழுது ஸ்திரீயானவள் அந்த விருட்சம் புசிப்புக்கு நல்லதும் பார்வைக்கு இன்பமும் புத்தியை தெளிவிக்கிறதற்கு இச்சிக்கப்படத்தக்க விருட்சமுமாய் இருக்கிறது என்று கண்டு அதன் கனியை பறித்து புசித்து தன் புருஷனுக்கும் கொடுத்தாள் அவனும் புசித்தான் என்பது if you look into verse 6 again he was convinced she was first deceived by the satan satan always works through our thought process he knows our weak points and our strong points he can when he knows it he can tap where 
he wants to put a bait on us when she was deceived look at this at verse 6 the woman was convinced she saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious she wanted the wisdom it would give her even before this incident happened the tree was already over there in eden and adam and eve they were already in the garden they have been told by god never ever go and take the fruit from that tree they obeyed it but look at the way the temptation has happened it they have been deceived by the satan who's always a liar who's always a liar who who always gives us half truth look at the question he poses did god really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden so that's that that's the bait he throws it to her you have to be very very careful what is the surroundings and what are we yielding into if we yield what are all the consequences so look at this wonderful thing that is happening here that led to the downfall of mankind did god really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden eve knew what she is not supposed to touch the satan knew what god has told eve not to touch but still he throws in the bait and when the bait is thrown she is deceived by that the same thing what we did study last week in james chapter 116 he says do not be deceived my bro- beloved brethren do not be led astray he was led astray and the whole human mankind was led astray so we have to be very careful about falling into temptations leading uh, ourselves to fall into sin so how does how does that happen we already know that it is our thought process it is not god who is leading us into temptation that we have to be very very clear that's what we saw last time i want to make this again an emphasis that god is not into the process of putting us into temptations it's our inner desire and then it's because of satan and the second question here is when can we be tempted what are all the circumstances that we fall into temptation first thing is when we are hungry i should accept myself if i'm hungry my main focus is to eat something so that i will not be famished i will not fall into any temptation if you think about yourself every other person most of the, our our temptations or eating to sins happen when we are totally hungry look at the situation when jesus was in the wilderness 40 days fasting he was tempted by satan when he was hungry but the lord was able to fend off those temptations using the words the scripture the second one is angry whenever we are angry or whenever we are in a state of anxiety if you think about what happened in our life if you just look back situations that has made us angry or when situations when we are more in a anxiety state that's the time we fall into temptations because like our mind is not focused our mind is not focused we are in a state of angriness our hearts palpitate we are in a state of anxiety and anxiousness so that's the time that we fall into temptations and then when we are 
lonely. You have to be very, very careful when you are in a situation where you are totally alone. People fall into temptations and they fall into sin. When David was all alone, when the whole army was fighting, we saw that last time, how he fell into the temptation. It's for every other person. We have to be very, very careful how we have to behave when we are lonely. There is a, there is a um, proverb which says like, character is what when you are all alone? Because mankind can fall into any type of sin or yield to temptation when he's all alone. And then when we are tired, our brain doesn't have the capacity to focus on anything. You don't have the energy. That's the time like when people tend to fall into sin. So you have to be careful when we are hungry, when we are angry or in a state of anxiety or when we are lonely or when we are tired. So it goes by HALT, H-A-L-T, hungry, angry, or anxiety, lonely, or tired. So what are we supposed to do when we are yielded ourselves to sin or to be tempted? The first thing you run to is the word of the God. You remember what happened in the wilderness when Jesus was there, when he was tempted, he was able to fend off by using the scriptures. So we need to focus on his words, read his words, and then we need to pray to him. If you look into Luke chapter 22, 40, Jesus says to his disciples, pray that you will not fall into temptation. Pray that you will not fall into temptation. So try to read the word, focus on the word, focus on the scriptures, and then try to talk to him. Try to communicate with him. When we do this, when we have this focus on him, on his words, we can resist the temptation. There are other informations I want to give you to how to overcome this temptation. One important point here is we have to take responsibility. As I told, there is always an outer bait that is trying to lure us, take the bait so that we will fall into temptation and eventually into sin. So we have to take responsibility of our thought process. What we think, what we see, are we seeing something that is making our mind deceived so that we will be yielding into temptation? So the first thing is we have to take responsibility of doing the right thing. And then the second one is focus on the big picture. Whenever there is a temptation, we always look into the minute details of the pleasures that we will be gaining out of that tempt tempting. When we see something that is very tempting us, we always look into that small thing and look into the immediate consequences of that. But you look into the big picture, what God is trying to say to you. That's the reason I told you, like, focus on the word of God. So when you focus on the word of God and when we pray, God will lead us in the right way and he will not lead us to fall into temptation. The second one, the third one, I'm sorry, the third one is 
we have to identify our weaknesses in our lives. When we, when we think that we are falling into temptation, we need to see on what are the weak points. Satan knows our weak points, but we need to acknowledge ourselves and bring out that weak points in us so that we will not be falling into those temptations again. And again, the fourth point, as I told it, is halt. It's hungriness, you're angry, you're lonely and tired. So you have to be very, very careful when you are in these situations. You never, ever yield to temptations. And the fifth one is we have to visualize ourselves by doing the right thing instead of falling into temptation and into the pleasures of sin, we need to ask ourselves the question, Lord, is this the right thing I'm doing? Am I doing the right thing or am I thinking the right thoughts? Whatever I think and I do, is it going to glorify you, Lord? If you visualize you, yourself by doing the right thing, we will not fall into temptation. And the sixth point here is, try to make yourself have a good friend whom you can trust. When you fall into temptation, try to open it to a person by saying, this is the situation that happened to me and I was about to fall into sin. Would you please pray for me? Try to have an accountable friend. The seventh one is, as I have already mentioned this, read the word of God. When you, if you do remember the Lord's Prayer, the last part, it says, lead us not into temptation. There are plenty of words verses in the scripture that will lead us towards him, focus on him, focus on his glory, focus on his faithfulness. Try to read the word, meditate on it, pray about it. God will definitely lead us out of the temptation. The eighth point is prayer. Have a wonderful communication with God. Even when we pray, we should not fall into temptation. As I earlier mentioned, like when disciples were in the mount, God says, like, don't fall into temptation. They were about to pray. God was about to pray. Satan knows where to put a bait. We might pray but at the same time, we might be thinking in the back of our minds, what would I be doing for lunch? What would I be doing at home when I go back from work? What do I need to buy in the shops during the weekend? These are all the thought process Satan always brings into. I'm just mentioning a few that are more. Satan always deceives us by throwing into all these things into, into our minds when we sit for prayer. He tries to interrupt us, the communication between God and us, so that we will be away from God, but closer to Satan. You have to be very, very careful. There is nothing we lose on this earth or in heaven and we obey and trust him. That's what we read in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust and obey him. Lean not in your own understanding. So we have to be very, very careful where we are, on what situation we are, and what are all the temptations that are surrounding us. Always Focus on his words. 
That's the reason he taught us in the prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Think about the big picture. Ask the question, Lord, is it going to glorify you, Lord, when I do this thing or when I talk about this or when I see this thing? It might mean small things, petty things you might ignore. But is that going to be a big downfall for us? As I told, like temptations come to all humans, big, small, poor, rich, poor it might be. But are we yielding to those temptations? Or are we focusing ourselves on God's word? Think about it. Pray about it. Meditate on his words. And always ask the Lord to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time. Thank you for the wonderful words you have given us, Lord. Lead us not into temptation, Lord. We have seen great people fall into temptation. The man of your heart, David, who fell into temptation. Lord, it's a lesson that we learn. Be with us. Help us to always focus on your words, Lord. Your words are always active and alive. It cuts through our souls and spirits, Lord. Open our hearts. Fertilize them with your words, Lord. Mm. Sink the truth in us so that we will never fall into temptation. Even if you are yielded more, Lord, Lord, we know that you are always with us. You never leave us. We know that, Lord. Be with us. Help us to grow more in the likeliness of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Even we make mistakes, Lord. At times we feel like we are sitting in darkness. Lord, it is your words. It is your words that bring us light into our life, Lord. Let us not be deceived. Let us not be led astray, Lord. Let your words command us in our thoughts, in our actions, in our speech, in our conduct, in our character, in everything, Lord. The way we live, let your name be glorified, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.